Now, here we've had a chance to, all the time, to see the possibility of children growing. I don't claim, mind you, that we've been wholly successful, but this has been our aim, that children would be growing, that would be finding themselves. Life isn't all earnest at Kilvanity. There's plenty of time and plenty of space to relax, and the children seem to appreciate it. What's most important to face is the happiness and the warmth, and, and just the love that that's here. But we seem so concerned about John A, and the patience that he's got. And so we're all knit together with this love, and it sounds just like a little heaven on earth or something, but. It sounds gorgeously beautiful the way I go on about it. There are 40 pupils at Kilvanity and about 10 adults. A very small school, but a pleasantly large family, complete with a dog. The main thing about why people are so happy here is because so you, you're relaxed and it's more a sort of natural place of how, you could, how people would live. I mean, this is not very different from how I would live at home. And and as in all homes, there are jobs to be done. At a quarter to nine each morning, everyone over nine years old gets down to some useful work. Beneath the freedom and the relaxation, there's a quiet sense of purpose, a stable pattern. And considering that this school has the country on its doorstep, the buildings are remarkably clean, and so are the children. Community life imposes certain duties and standards, and for the most part, the pupils come to accept them, though they may find it difficult at first. They come into a place where the word freedom is used, um, and to a progressive school, and they imagine that freedom means doing anything they want. But really, this isn't the case at all, of course. And um, so they find they have a lot of difficulty in adjusting to living with other people in a free situation where they have to be considerate, not so much of the authority, but just of people. What things do you like best in this school? Mm, free choice and meal times. There's a limited freedom over lessons at Kilvanity. You can make your own choice among the set courses offered, but once you've chosen, you're expected to turn up regularly. The groups are small, the children help each other a good deal, and for a school run on a shoestring budget, there's a surprising amount of modern equipment. The maths course, for instance, is on up-to-date lines with a good deal of practical activity. If you need it, there's help readily at hand. The children are on Christian name terms with all their teachers. The science lab is less well equipped, but few of the pupils set their academic sights very high. The course has a strong practical slant, as the teacher explained. You can learn so much just by um, experience and you know, intuition. But some explanation and study of it, you know, aids this. So I just gave one exercise, and this was to support a brick nine inches above the table, using as little balsa wood as possible, and you could use thread. One of them was, you know, very massive, and that, in fact, supported two bricks, and, and didn't fulfill the thing of using the minimum amount of material, and one a much lighter structure. You stand and stare with sideways shifting glance, White faces and admission of defeat, dissolving like dust before the mob's advance. For the senior pupils, there's a tutorial atmosphere with plenty of discussion and a wide range of ability. But what about examinations? I think if you want to work for exams and things, you find it hard because oh. there aren't you know, people aren't working the whole time. But if you're in the school, but on the other hand, you don't get great pressure feeling. You have to get everything done in time. And you can relax and work comes much easier to you. Later in the day, there are free choice activities and the art room and pottery have plenty of custom. Well, I think creative work has only now been recognised by the educators as the road into business. 
develop and by persons themselves. And I think right through human history, people were creating, and people will continue to create. People are always creating. I think I like clay because you can, I mean, if you make a mistake, you can always smash it in and you can start again. With clay, it's just, you can, it's so flexible and you can just move it into any shape you want. You can just do almost anything with it. It's not like stone or wood or, or whatever, metal. I just know that I'm, I'm far happier here and I think that's a great, I think that's a, good thing to go by. I mean, I think as long as you're happy at a place, because if you're not happy at a place, then of course you can't produce work or good material or whatever they want you to produce. John Aikenhead believes in the value of learning for yourself the basic skills of farmers and builders and boatmen. The children hollowed this canoe from an 80-foot pine, safer than plywood any day once you've lashed the outriggers in position. Creative work is given pride of place at this school and it takes many forms. You may choose to build a canoe or shape a coracle or you may prefer to be an actor. I think the theatre is the mother of the arts and if you really have plays being produced or theatre in being, you will inevitably have the other arts coming in. And then the disciplines that come in, when children make things, they must measure. They must measure, they must calculate, they must watch stresses. This is what John Aikenhead means by discipline. To quote his own words, the school which emphasizes the importance of freedom, art and self-expression, and which could at a glance seem undisciplined, is in fact encouraging those conditions required for the development of self-discipline by the individual. A great deal of creative energy goes into publishing a school magazine, the Kilwanity Broadsheet. It's a mixture of lively gossip, thoughtful articles, and sensitive poetry. Poetry here isn't a class. It's something that's felt, it's something that's lived. And maybe it's because of, of the friction and, and the, the fighting among one another and the quiet interludes that some poetry can be written, but it doesn't come out like pap. It doesn't come out like some pre-digested garbage that's been, you know, sort of chunked into somebody's mouth and come out again. Leaves are falling, yellow, brown, and red. Winter is nearly here. You can see through the hedges, and nearly all the flowers are dead. Big clumps of dock and leaves are growing on the ground, and broom is growing in bushes. A hawthorn tree is covered in red, and I can hear the cundy trickling. The year is alive, but slowly dying. These are softly dropping to soil. Sap is dropping to roots.
clouds are slowly creeping up to sabotage the sun. Then comes the winter time. There goes the sun. It's a child who's happy, and a baby who's happy, who's a happy toddler, and a happy toddler goes happily to school, and the happy infant room makes a child who likes this seat of learning. And since it's education in general we're talking about, I don't see that anything should stop that progress up through a school. Kilwanity pupils live a good deal out of doors, and the school farm is a basic part of the pattern. It pays a dividend that you don't measure in cash. When children are up against, especially young children, do you know? When they're up against the tempo of a farm, things slow down. And they slow down to a rhythm that's a sound one, a sound healthy one for human beings. Mankind has lived there a long, long, long time between the green earth and the blue sky and the creatures that live on it beside him and serve his needs. Their needs should be learned by him and they have to be learned by him. And kids have a great respect for somebody who knows the mysteries of animals.